Good day, everybody. Welcome to another podcast with Adam Zeman. Hello, Adam. Hello. Well, of course, myself, Brad Brewer with Eagle Homes, powered by EXP Realty. Uh, Vince Duvall, I don't know if you've noticed he's missing or not. He is missing. He will be joining us shortly. I believe it's Parent Teacher Conference Day at his, uh, his daughter's school. So excited for him. Got some fun topics for you today. We're going to, but stay tuned for the end because we are going to cap this off with uh, some tips and tricks throughout real estate and, of course, the lending world. So, but we're going to kick off today with some fun stuff here. We're going to talk about the strangest, weirdest, coolest, funnest, or just plain nuttiest things that we've either come across in houses or with clients. So, uh, Adam, I'm going to let you kick this one off. Uh, obviously, we're going to keep any specific names or addresses out. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so, I, I kind of, I was, you know, there's, I guess in the mortgage world, there's always something weird that happens. Um, but I want, I kind of thought about a, a, did an open house with a realtor probably like eight years ago. And uh, just the whole house was weird. The basement was weird. It had a, like a swinger type vibe to it. Um, but the weirdest thing was um, there was carpet on the walls of the bathroom. And uh, I just, okay. that blew my mind. That was, that, that was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. Um, I've never seen anything quite like it before. I, I, you know, I don't go in as many houses as like a realtor, but um, yeah, that, that was, that was cool. I, I never, uh, you know, it was, it was a good laugh. Um, okay. And uh, I think, I think I re you know, not so long ago, probably the, probably about a year ago, I had probably um, one of the, one of the more eccentric, um people i've ever worked with an older gentleman um really uh you know he'd call and then he would want to he would be happy and then he would the next day he'd want to back out of the deal and then the next day he would be happy and uh i didn't i don't normally do this but i had to go like meet him to get his documents and uh so you know i, I had a, a vision of, of this person kind of thing and and he rolls up in this this jacked up truck, okay, um, and he has these two little dogs, okay, so he's like this big man, these two little dogs, and he just yep. ends up being like the biggest, you know, I don't know, sweetheart in the world, like he just, uh, I had a different Im image of him, but he was, he continued to act nuts, and he, and he actually still calls me to this day, and really? every, yeah. every other month, he asked me how to make his mortgage payment. Um, so I, I, I have to go through, <laughs> this is over a year, well over a year ago. So. Okay. They still call him, huh? Still calls. Yep. Every month? How, every, how about month? every other month. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. All right. That's, those are definitely a couple instances, you know, you, a quick question because the, and it's something we do have to deal with now. That's definitely more extreme side, but, um, how, how much, is managing emotions a part of what you do? I would say a lot. I mean, you, you try to negate some of that by almost over communicating and setting expectations. I think the longer I've done this, the more I've just learned about um, if you tell people what to expect, you sort of negate some of the emotional side of things. Um, a lot of times people think that you can just do an application and three seconds later, you know, boom. That's not the case with everybody. That just isn't. Um, so, yeah, there, there's it's emotional. I mean, you're looking into people's finances. They're emotional about their credit score, what they think that, that it's going to be, or maybe they're, um, you know, they have anxieties about it. And then when you get into the process, they're, you know, you don't buy too many homes. So, on the finance side, you know what, Brad, you know, like as soon as, as soon as we get into the the actual offer and it's accepted, a lot of that's coming off of you. You're just dealing with inspections and, you know, now it's really my time to do the heavy lifting and I'm probably communicating with them a lot more than you are. And, um, so, yeah, but again, setting the expectations up, up front kind of helps negate some of the emotions. It helps a lot. Yeah, and 
yeah, throughout the process, I think that's the biggest thing that that we also do on the, on the real estate side of it is is kind of giving some expectations, including and we've talked about this in our buyer consultation discussions we've had that including even saying here's some of the things that may come up that are rare, but don't be surprised yet if it does come up. So yeah, yeah I, I think setting the expectations or just uh, really just going through the process is one of those things. So all right, a little, little sidetrack there on the, on the cool things, but I, I think it, it comes up. The one thing I always find interesting on your end of it is, is, and I don't know if you, if this is something that you do, people seem shocked sometimes, like not that their credits were bad, just it's not what they thought it was because of some of those apps that are out there now, like, uh, uh, oh, what's the what's the one the one that's most uh, popular like right now? For Credit me. Karma, maybe or Credit uh, Karma. Like, um, real quickly, just I you know because it's it's again it's around those emotions and things. What you mention apps like that, like they they can be a little accurate. From what I've heard about Credit Karma, it's it's a little bit more of a futures thing. It's like here's where you're trending versus where you're at. Yeah. So you know, everybody's heard the term algorithm. Okay, so maybe we don't really understand what that actually is, but there's a different algorithm. It's a generic one. When you pull through a Credit Karma or the Capital One has one or whatever, okay? So it's very generic. It's using different models to um, give you your credit score. And it seems very similar to like if you were to do an auto loan, that, that should be pretty, it should be about the same, okay? Okay. Mortgages use a different model than all the rest of them. Okay. So you might you might have a lower score because you had a 30-day late payment. Um, where and it might might have been like seven months ago, where the credit algorithm for the generic thing is saying, well, that's kind of seven months ago. We're gonna, you know, reduce that a little bit. There's no, they don't tell us how those things are weighted. Those that's you know kept a secret, but if you if you're a 770 credit score on that on those, you're probably going to be a you know a good a, above 740 on uh, a mortgage pull. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, if you're like a 620 on those, yeah, it seems like if you have kind of your credit is a little lower, the actual mortgage pull is going to pull a lot lower uh, for whatever reason. That's and and that's kind of a a generalization, but that's okay. what I've seen. So. Okay. You're, I I can't tell you how many times we're like, well, I'm six, you know, you know, I don't have to look at my credit or don't pull it. I'm like a 620 on those. And I'm like, well, we do, first of all, because the credit score, like your credit report tells me more than just your credit score. But also, yeah, you you could end up being like a 590, unfortunately. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it, it could be right. a pretty big swing. Okay. And, and again, that just goes back to, you know, setting, setting those expectations, which you talked about. So perfect. All right, a little sidetrack there. We got a couple of questions, but that's some of the weird things we have to deal with in emotions. So uh, appreciate the extra feedback. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give, I've got a fun, weird, and a cool. Um, I mean, I could could have switched the fun and the cool, but coolest thing I've ever seen, and then it's close to, I could have flipped this to what my fun one is, but my coolest one I thought I ever saw was I was in a house one time and there was a hidden wine set, cellar underneath the kitchen island and the access was on like uh yeah you know, the island was more like a long rectangle um and, you know wide enough it, there was a side door that opened up and a little stairway that went down to your wine cellar i thought that was pretty cool that's i've never seen that before so that's pretty awesome so that's my coolest um fun which also could be well to me pretty cool too um I was in a property one time where they had taken their second garage and the, the guy had turned it into a 19th hole bar, bar uh, with some grills and smokers and stuff out there too. So he could pretty much entertain for days um, a 19th hole bar and grill basically at, at his house. I thought that was like, of course, as a golfer, I'm like, okay, that's, this is down on my bucket list. <laughs> so. So those are my fun and fun and cool. Uh, weirdest thing I ever saw. I've probably seen a bunch of different weird stuff, but for some reason, this was, I went in a condo one time and there was no kitchen. 
they had taken out because you could you could remodel how you want. I don't know how they got away with this, and I I hope they I I didn't never I didn't end up selling it, and I suggested to them before they go sell, if they ended up deciding to sell, and they never called me back and lost contact unfortunately. Um, they had taken out the kitchen, and made and just changed it with a kitchenette. It had there was a refrigerator, the sink was still there, a dishwasher. But they had taken out and they had like a microwave, uh, like an air fryer, but they it, it, it fit like all the stuff was like fit where you think a stove would be. But it wasn't just like they just pulled the stove out and did this. There was some craftsmanship involved here. And I just thought it was the weirdest thing. Why would you do that? Right. Yeah. That's so weird. that was kind of weird to me. That was kind of an interesting, um, sort of interesting kind of probably, I guess that stuck out to me as one of the weirdest. I've, I've seen a couple of things of like, but this gets into people's taster's choice, I guess, like decorating stuff, like um, black walls, you know, and like paint your bedrooms black, stuff like that, and some other weird stuff. But I thought that that actually making over your kitchen into a kitchen, that was one of the weirdest things I ever saw. Let Welcome, out. Vince. Take yourself off mute. Sorry, right, guys. Hey. Uh, glad All right, so uh, we did. We both just you know, good timing because um, Adam shared his weirdest, coolest stuff, and I just shared mine. So guess who's up? This guy. All right. Um, so <laughs> one of the I don't know. I I don't know if I'd call it weird or kind of uh, hodgepodge, but I showed a house early in my career where the seller or the previous owners. We were on what the seller known to be as the fifth stage of an addition. And this house went from a small ranch style built in early 1900s. It went out and then they expanded back and then it went back in. So it was like a plus. They just kept in each level. None of the levels were, they were all off probably about yay, you know, four or five inches. So you always went up and down as you walked into each addition. And each addition was built in squares. So think of a plus sign with, with a you know an eight by eight square for say or a 12 by 12 square added on each time so they built it in squares it was really weird um but to find out it was built that way so that they can save on materials everything was it, it was in eight eight by four piece of plywood eight by four drywall everything was built in squares so that they could perfectly add on to this house without wasting extra material <laughs> A, it was goofy, but B, like, come on, let's make the floors all the same height. Let's, you know, keep it all level. But yeah, so that was probably one of the weirdest ones I've walked into. And you can totally, you can totally tell that it was just continuously added onto and added onto and added onto. There's no flow. They're like, oh, let's just add more space. Um, one of the coolest houses I, I, I've seen, like, I've seen multi million dollar houses and I've seen, you know, some that are just, eh. They, they should be tore down and, and rebuilt. But one of the coolest ones I saw was a house that had a swimming pool. Um, and I'd say in their lower level, but it was actually a walkout. So they had an in-ground, they built the house basically on top of an in-ground pool, which I thought was kind of silly. I, I can't imagine the work I'd go to if that in-ground pool, you know, started to leak or if they had issues or if they just wanted to get rid of it. But I was like, Man, how cool it'd be in the wintertime. It, it was here in the Midwest. So, you know, it was actually in Wisconsin, in Kenosha. How cool would it be to actually go to this house, you know, live in the house, be like, ah, I'm going to take a swim this afternoon and just go to your basement. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, and then the one, I, when I was looking for an investment property, this one, it, it took a minute to figure out what was going on here, but I walked in and there was, all, all the windows upstairs were blacked out. You walked down um, or you walked in and the there's a mattress laying in the stairs. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Um, and in the kitchen was a bunch of milk jugs. I, I would say probably like 50 milk jugs. And, and you could tell they were milk jugs because they still had the, uh, you know, the Dean's milk label on them or whatever. Um, I thought you were going to say it had still milk in them. Thank God for that. No, no, it did not. Uh, and then throughout the house, there was dirt piles, black dirt piles. I was like, what the hell is going on in here? 
Um, go in the basement. The basement, they lowered the ceiling. Uh, and they had, so they lowered the ceiling to where it was probably only four feet off the ground. You had to kind of duck to kind of see what was going on. And then they, they took plywood and raised the floor. Um, and on this plywood, um, they had cylinder blocks still sitting. I was like, what the hell is this? Um, you go upstairs and there's a rope system that is running on the second floor from room to room. Okay. All the vents on the main floor were covered up and, and clogged. Um, and then there was a hose running from the basement uh, all the way upstairs. So to find out it was a, the previous owners were growing weed in the house. This was in 2010, 2012. They were growing weed in the house. The house was right next door to a Kenosha County Sheriff. Uh, <laughs> and they, they lived there for about, they, they rented the house. Supposedly the owners lived in the house for about a year and a half uh, before anybody figured it out. The owner lived in Florida. She rented it out on Craigslist to somebody. They were paying their paying their bills on a monthly basis. She didn't care. Uh, but so in the basement, they were growing it. So they lowered the they lowered the ceiling so that they can have direct light over the, the plants. In the garage, they had uh, gutters. They used gutters with black dirt in it to grow the plants. And the water, when it hit the gutter, it would then, if it seeped out, it ran all the way down and they caught it at the end. And then upstairs, the rope system was to dry the stuff. And I was like, man, they actually had a very uh, I mean, they had a system down, right? Uh, that could the, go on your that could go into the coolest things you've ever seen because that's a pretty cool system they had going on there, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, and the milk jugs. So, like, what caught me was the milk jug. I was like, why milk jugs? Talk to a, you know to find out it grows best under distilled water. So they would fill up milk, you know, they cleaned out their milk jugs, filled them up, let the water distill, let it sit for a while until, you know, all the chemicals got out of it and, and the water distilled. Then mm -hmm. they'd use that water to they'd dump into the hose to water their system. So, like yeah. System, for sure. Yeah, they, definitely a, a very unique, uh, definitely cool, kind of weird, uh, kind of crazy system out there. So, yeah. there's right, a. Right. Well, that's definitely some pretty cool, weird, and pretty just effing messed up stuff in some cases. So, yeah, yeah. awesome, great cheers. All right, our next topic today: um, winter is coming upon us, so we're gonna. I, I I don't really understand this word, these two words together, winter and fun, but we're gonna go ahead and do fun things to do in winter in Wisconsin. I'm gonna kick it off. Nothing. <laughs> So, yes, I'm the guy that doesn't like winter, at least in this group. All right. I guess if you like some stuff, if you like skiing, there's several ski hills, sledding hills. Uh, if you like ice fishing, I actually do like ice fishing because you you get to sit in a nice warm shanty and then uh, wait for your tip-ups to go. So that's actually kind of fun. And then snowmobile trails for those that have snowmobiles. There's a lot of nice snowmobile trails from what I know. Um, not my cup of tea on any of those, maybe except for the ice fishing because I get to stay warm. For at least while, a while but uh the, the those about all that's the best i could do guys sorry adam go ahead Brad, you pretty much covered all of them that's it that's, that's, that's what I mean? we, we have skiing ice fishing um snowmobiling um i that's it for me i think uh i want to get a little bit back into skiing you know that's always fun to me if we if we get some snow i think i think we might this year who knows um but yeah that that's i don't know i can't think of anything else to do in the winter except for hunker down and seems like the bars have a lot of population in them in winter so i don't know that could be that could be a fun thing to do in the winter sure. I'm just go to the bars i mean no ju no judging adam no judging no, no judgment no judgment i don't know i like to be outside so if, I, if it's not too cold i like to do something um unfortunately we don't have a lot of daylight in winter it's probably the thing that kills me the most yeah Hopefully daylight savings time changes next year. We'll see. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tie into those things. It, I love snowmobiling in the wintertime. Uh, usually get up towards Eagle river, or Michigan area, uh, try to get out once or twice a year, but, and, and honestly, I'd, I'd rather take a few days during the week and go up. I, I'd prefer to be out on the trails Monday through Thursday. Uh, you get up there on a, on a weekend and 
it's busy. There are, you know, a ton of people out there. Uh, so can I say all the crazies come out? Hate, hate to admit well, it. But does it look like a highway system? Is that what you're saying? Basically, it's, I mean, the trail system in upper Wisconsin is very spread out. Um, so it's, it's not bad, but you get up to like you know, wherever where it's supposedly a snowmobile capital of the world. There, right. there's a lot of population that kind of goes, you know, from the outer cities towards Eagle River and then back out. We usually start in Eagle River and work our way out. Um, but it's, you know, it's nice to be able to go around a corner and not have to second guess if someone's going to be coming at you. On the weekends, you're always worried about that. During the week, it's not as bad. Um, so that's one. The other thing I want to try, I had a friend that did this last year. She did a... Um, I think it's called snow dog race or something like that. It's mm-hmm. up by, uh, up by Michigan, still in Wisconsin. So kind of uh, closer to the UP area, but you can, you can go on a, a, a snow dog sled ride and, and you rent it out. They take you out for two hours. You basically are in control of your, your dogs. Now there's probably mm-hmm. four or five sleds that go out together. Um, and I should have looked it up, but I, I want to say it's, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I'll let you guys know. But I was like, that'd be kind of something cool to do. Like you see it on TV. Yeah. And I'm like, how cool would it be to be hushing dogs? Be like, go, boy. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, and just kind of flying along, right? That'd be kind of this next best thing to going on a, a snowmobile flying. Um, another cool thing around here, um, Petrified Springs and even Kettle Moraine State Park. There's a lot of people who see snowshoeing out. Mm-hmm. Uh going out and just strapping on snowshoes and walking on, you know, well, it'd be a nice day, but you can walk. If you've ever tried snowshoes, they're pretty cool. Um, you can walk on top of four feet of snow and not fall through. Um, it's a, it's a pretty cool feeling. Um, I know I've been on a snowboard and a, and a ski skis before and fallen into powder and, you know, not been able to, to get up. Uh, so yeah, snowshoeing, snowshoeing is pretty cool. Uh, I, hey, hey guys, I actually thought of another one to do a fun thing in the winter. Ready? I'm going to shock you here. Travel to a warm place. <laughs> uh, now, don't get me wrong. I, I Come March, we'll be down in uh, Alabama for a week. So, yes, I agree. Travel to a warm place. Brian. At least by March, we get teased with some, you know, usually some warm weather here and there, and it starts to turn at the end of the month. Whereas, we don't get a lot of teases in January, unfortunately, but uh, right. that's it's a good time, to, but it's a good time to travel. But I, I know there's some fun wintertime activities. I know a lot of people out there love wintertime activities, probably why they live in this wonderful state of Wisconsin that we live in. So um, anything else as far as uh, that you guys can think of that aren't sarcastic like mine? Do you... Uh... Can you go? I've seen people do like winter golfing in the snow. Um, you ever seen that? It's not real golf, you know, like it's not a lot of wood, you know, but it, I guess it's a form of golf. <laughs> yeah. So Hawks, yeah. Hawks View does, um, it's either on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, but it's a nine hole um, little like kind of golf thing where you, they, they give you a couple clubs to use and you use tennis balls and oh, you nice. hit them. You know, they, they shorten up a nine hole course for you and, you and you hit these tennis balls at the hole and, and the holes are bigger. So they're, you know, yay big instead of yay big. But uh, it, it's a cool way to get out, you know, some hot cocoa with, you know, rum chata yeah. in it really, you know, makes it a little exciting. The last couple of years, New Year's Day has been really cold. So I, I haven't committed to it, but I, I'd like to try that when it comes to, you know, golfing outside in the winter. Just, you know, something to say I did, right? Right. More than else. I don't know. Still sounds cold to me. That's all, <laughs> that stuff. So. all right, gentlemen. Um, I gave the tease at the beginning. So we're going to give a, a couple of tips and tricks. We each have a, a tip or a trick, I guess, however you want to look at it uh, on some topics today. So uh, my first, I'm going to, I'll kick off again. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to take it from the kind of the seller side of things. Uh, my My tip of this week would be to get that pre-listing inspection. I know we went through a period of time when you could get away with no inspections and offers without inspections, but uh, a little bit of the market shift, I think uh, we're definitely inspections are important. They always have been. As a seller, I highly recommend a pre-listing inspection. The reason is because no matter how long you've owned your home, no matter how much you know about your home, 
there just are sometimes things that we just don't see or maybe we're unwilling to see that inspector can tell you it really not only eliminates the surprises on your end but by giving that information out to the buyers ahead of time it can eliminate a lot of a lot of the stress and worry from that contract through inspection contingency which is probably your most nerve-wracking time so i think it's a great tip uh, I know us Eagle Homes, we actually have one of our marketing structures. Um, it's actually something that we cover uh, for you. So uh, if you have more questions about that, please contact us. Uh, Vince, what's up? What's what's your tip for this week? You know, I, I working with a lot of sellers um, right now, uh, or buyers, sorry, Brad, uh, buyers right now. I, I think my biggest tip is work with an agent that is willing to show you as many properties as you want to see. Uh, remember, you're, you're never a burden. I, as an agent, I want you to get in as many properties as you want to see so we can narrow down your search. Um, you know, there I've worked with buyers that are like, oh, I don't want to burden you. I'm like, no, I, I love walking through houses. I mean, it's it's so much fun, you know, seeing the different houses, different layouts. Uh, you know, I, I love talking to people and work, walking through their vision of, you know, where their couch is going to go, what they're going to do with their master bedroom, or, you know, what happens if they change the appliances and cabinets from, old 1980s, the cabinets to nice, clean white cabinets or, you know, something with color and stainless steel appliances. So, you know, I love walking through that vision with people, but work with an agent that's willing to get out there and, and hit the ground running with you, see as many houses as you can. And also, you know, if you're looking at $250,000 homes, that's top of your budget. Look at things that are 275. We're seeing, you know, huge price reductions right now. People are wanting to sell. So, Look at those homes. If it checks your boxes, you know, let's see if they do a price reduction or, you know, maybe we offer under, maybe they're overpriced because the market's starting to shift down. So look, look at, look at everything out there. Don't be afraid to walk through homes. So that's what I got this week, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Vince. All right, Adam, uh, what's our, what's our mortgage or tip for the day? Um, so I'm going to go with a, a credit tip. Um, okay. I think that uh, that's always good. I, you know, it's not like we have a credit um, class in, in high school um, that teaches you credit. So two things. Keep your credit cards below 30% of the available balance, meaning if you have a $1,000 limit, um, pay it down to $300 or more um, before it reports. So that helps increase your credit and it shows that you're, in their eyes, using it responsibly. Um, unfortunately, once you go above that 50%, it actually hurts your credit. So just keep the balance low. And remember, um, the balance can be whatever until it reports. So you can actually call and say, when when does my credit card report to the credit bureaus? And they'll tell you. Um, so that, that's probably one of two, two tips here. And the second one is no late payments and understand a, a, a payment isn't late on your credit until it's 30 days late. So pay it on the 27th day. You might get a late charge from the company, but it's not reporting as a late. Okay. Don't wait until the, you know, the 35th day. Um, do whatever it takes to get that payment made before it reports as a late payment. I think a lot of people think that if it's late, it's late. That's not sure. The 30 day late is a late payment on a credit. So any questions about that? I mean, I am. Those you know, are probably the two biggest things to help your credit score or maintain your credit score or just uh, um, in general, you know? Adam, I got a question real quick um, in regards to, you know, paying down your credit. I've always, and tell me good, bad, or indifferent, I've always tried to pay my credit cards every two weeks. So every time I got paid, I tried to pay down my credit card. Um, you know, I, I think in my eyes, it does one of two things. I'm not surprised with a thousand dollar bill at the end of the month. I'm I'm more comfortable paying a five hundred dollar bill, right? Um, or you know, five hundred versus two fifty, whatever it might be. So I, I've always been the person to pay every couple of weeks just to kind of stay in a good rotation. To to your point though, it probably would also help keep them below that thirty uh, percent a lot easier. You know, it doesn't hit home as much if you're paying, you know, a couple hundred bucks versus five hundred dollars, right? So. Right. I don't know if that is beneficial or indifferent. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's a good way just to manage your money. You know, that's that's kind of what I do. So um, I personally run everything through my credit card to get the points. 
and I have a high limit so that I never go anywhere close to above like 5% of my available balance. So I never, it's a problem, but I, I do the same thing. I basically, you know, look at my balance and just pay it down, you know, every, every couple of weeks. And I think that's, that's a really healthy and good way just to manage your money and your credit card balance. So it doesn't get out of control. I think that's the problem people look at it, they're like, wow, in like a month. And they're like, this is crazy, you know, and then it becomes a problem. And um, emotionally, they think they can't pay down. And, you know, we can go into that, that whole conversation. But yeah, that's a good, right. I, I think I like that. That's a good way of doing it. Awesome. Great. Well, great tips to guys that guys today. Um, uh, some, we obviously went over a kind of a fun little uh, selection of topics from fun, weird to tips to i guess we'll call it winter fun so anyway um next week a little sneak preview one of our topics next week speaking of winter is we're going to go through some ways to get your home ready for the winter season so sorry it's coming for those that are like me but we're going to go through that next week so thank you everybody for joining us for uh vince adam myself have a great week and we'll see you next week thanks guys